decades, women have fought tooth and manicured nail for equality and independence. But where has it left our men? That's well a hard question. More than ever, 21st century men are struggling to find their identity. I don't know who wears the trousers anymore. So many of them lack confidence and they still live at home. And when it comes to women, they are clueless. I don't think I'll ever think about what women want. I'm taking 10 hapless, hopeless blokes and I'm going to transform them into eligible, dateable, capable men. And by the end of it, find the hero inside all of them. Over one week, each guy is going to have to leave behind their sad lives. I have no clue what's going to happen. And face their greatest fears. I feel absolutely destroyed already. I've got no freaking clue. Confront their inner demons. I'd like to be more trusting! And learn a few things about the opposite sex. It's the most physical contact I've had with a woman in a long time. Help is at hand. This is shocking. Just let out the rage. Release that emotion. It's not going to be easy. Right. I've got to get through this. I'll agree to disagree, then. No, no. It's time to man up. This is James. He's 31, single, and comes from a relatively long line of farmers. My father is a farmer. His father was a farmer before that. My grandfather on my mother's side always wanted to go into farming, but uh, he ended up becoming a plumber instead. For James, true happiness comes in the form of a 10-ton piece of metal. I've always been into tractors. I used to have a fairly extensive collection of tractors when I was a child, and now I'm playing with the real toys. <laughs> I'm driving a self-propelled sprayer. In the cab, I've got CB radio, air conditioning. I'm handling large equipment to a very high level of skill. It is a pretty blokey place to work, but I love what I do. When you've got a day like this, you look around and all you see is green and sunshine and blue sky. How many other people get to see that every day? James might be living out his boyhood dream, but family and friends see it very differently. He works very awkward hours. It's OK to take a day off work. He needs to make some time for him and his life. I do invite James quite a lot to come out, but because of work, he never comes. He's on his own all day in the tractor, speaking to himself. Well, speak to himself. He probably, that's the only conversation he probably has. James has had to get used to living a solitary existence. But as the seasons change, he wants more from life. I wouldn't say I'm lucky with the ladies, but it'd be nice to have someone to cuddle up to in the evening or go out and do something with. He kind of struggles with new people just to get that engaging conversation going. When he meets new women. <laughs> I'd love to see him really happy and with somebody. He deserves it. He does deserve it. James is a tough farmer whose long hours and routine cut him off from the outside world and the chance of romance. So, I'm pulling him out by the roots and bringing him to the Man Up flat in London to challenge his perceptions with my five-step programme of reinvention. Let's go to London and see what, sort of, what it's all about, then. Over one week, James will be stripped bare emotionally, physically and psychologically in a bid to help him discover what he needs. Bit of a jump into the unknown. Never done anything like this before. We'll just have to wait and see what, uh, what the week brings, I suppose. You can take the man out of the tractor, but can you take the tractor out of the man? OK. I suppose a bit more trendy than what I'm used to and what have you. Yeah, looks good. It's James's first morning at the Man Up flat and lying ahead is the chance of a new dawn. What I want James to realise is that there's life outside of the farm. I'm here to sort the wheat from the chaff and find out what's holding him back. I don't think James has got a clue what he's in for here. He's so accustomed to spending all his time on his own, in his tractor. I'm really going to have to get him to see the world from a different perspective. 
Well, so what is it you really want? You've obviously done this with a view in mind. Yeah, I guess by the end of this process, I'd, you know, like to uh, try and find something to take my uh, mind away from work. Would that something else be a woman? That would be a bonus, but... That would be a... <laughs> when was your last girlfriend? A couple of three years ago. What's your longest relationship? Four or five months. Four or five months? OK. Yeah. Would you say you're in touch with your feminine side at all? I guess to a point, yeah. Be honest. Are you good around groups of girls? Or after a long day at work, do you just want to be with the blokes? Yeah. Sometimes I get home from work after a long day and it's a case of how much effort do I want to make of an evening, you know? Is it easier to just sort of uh, have a quick change and go see the guys it's or...? It's easier hanging out with the lads, isn't it? Yeah. It is, cos it's what you know. Yeah. It's banter, whereas women is, feels like a bit more of a drain. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> this might be why you're single. It's a possibility, yes. Yeah. I really like a challenge. He is the epitome of the kind of Neanderthal man. He's actively chosen not to be around women, to hang out with the lads, so he's got a bit of a shock in store. I'm going to have to grab James by the root vegetables to shake him out of his country ways. Fortunately, my first challenge aims to do just that. We were discussing earlier that you're not used to being around girls. Not a huge amount, no. No. And it's really important that you get in touch with that part of your personality, the sensitivities. Right. Which is an area that, as you said earlier, has been kind of forgotten about. I can agree to that, yeah. James seriously needs to get in touch with his feminine side. So I'm going to open him up to a world far, far away from tractors, to a place where farmers fear to tread. To soften up our burly farmer. I want him to experience a world of beauty, charm and elegance. I'm going to hazard a guess and say dancing isn't your area of expertise. <laughs> uh, no, that's not my... No, not really what I've uh, done much of before, except badly. Uh, what about um, ballet? Yeah. Time to slip into something more comfortable. I could have thought of something else I'd rather try than ballet, but there you go, here we are. I guess we're going to give it a go or whatever. I haven't got a lot of choice now, have I? He's a real bloke. He's very, like, black and white. So he's not very flexible with his thought. You know, he's going to have to be flexible not only with his thoughts, but physically. But already, James is finding himself at a loose end. What the hell do you do with these bits? I guess you tie them around elsewhere, I don't know. They are fiddly. I'm guessing the guys at work are going to get a good laugh out of this. I tend to be able to understand women because I like to listen to them, but I wouldn't say I've got too much of a feminine side myself. Many people would say I'm probably too in tune with my feminine side, but I'm all right with that because I love Alan McBeal. I've cried at Green Mile, does that count? I think any man that takes more care over his appearance than a woman um, needs to truly look inside himself. Really not one of them guys that tend to spend ages in the mirror and find it ridiculous. I don't mind using a bit of uh, moisturiser. Definitely have a feminine side. I am like the male Beyonce. I love my feminine side. I think every man should have one. And all the way down, and then back, and... Hi, ladies. Hi. James. Yep. You're on your own now, Treacle. Yep. <laughs> Hi, I'm James. Nice to meet you all. Where do you want me? Can this burly bloke make the switch from tractors to tutus? We came at an exciting time. We're just about to do Batman Gleesey. Four and four, three, two, and one, two, three. First, a warm up. You're shaking already. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Seven, stretch those toes. Down, eight. You look like you were pooing through the eye of a needle. <laughs> smile. Oh, I'll try and smile. Try even if you're not enjoying it. Try and look like you are. Mm -hmm. He's no sugar plum fairy, so teacher Catriona suggests something to help him spring into life. You're going to do what we call tour en l'air. This is a man's move. Mm -hmm. And from here, you're going to take a jump all the way around and you're going to land swapping feet. Yes? Let's see. Okay. One, two, three. Four and I. 
and two, three, four, and change, two, three, we step forward, and in and jump again, two, three, four, and out, two, okay, let's do that again, and jump, shall we try all, all together? If we must. And out, change, one, two, three. keep going, in, two, three, four, change, one, two, three, four, step forward, in and turn. Ball and turn. Look at it. Turn. Are you alright? It's all a bit too much for him right now. He's frowning, he looks in pain, he looks uncomfortable, and it's almost like he's trying to enjoy it, but not really letting himself. He needs to relax. So, um, if Perhaps some partner work will, will play to his strengths. So, we're going to use your manly muscles to work with these lovely ladies, and you're going to work on lifting them through the air. How does that sound? All right. Yeah. OK. Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Picking up a prima ballerina is nothing yeah, like lifting a sack of spuds. You lost the eye contact a little bit there. Yeah. James needs to connect with his partner to succeed. Yeah. And... Good. How does that feel? Very good. Yeah. Well, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. This is a lot about coordination. As James channels his inner Billy Elliot, it's time for greater things. We're going to try and put all of these little contact things oh, that we've done <laughs> together into your routine. Yes? It's a nice little combination. Yeah, I can't see that working well, but we'll try. Again, it's responding to your partner, yes? Mm -hmm. And... James has done brilliantly. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Beely now. He's really engaged and discovered a part of himself he never knew existed. I just want to thank you for having me here today. I must admit I've had more fun than I expected. It's been oh, quite interesting. Nice. And uh, you guys are incredibly fit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you'll go to another ballet class? <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put money on it. But uh, <laughs> I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't turn it down flat. Very different from what I'm used to. But uh, you know, the girls and the instructor were all lovely and had a good time. And uh, yeah, I think I may have found a skill set I didn't know I had before. Ladies. What did you think? There's guys that have been on ballet courses for weeks yes. and couldn't do what he yeah, just did. Yeah, they're gonna drop. The position that me and him had, it was like he had the firm grip of my hands. And he was really holding on. Really firm. Well, and that's confident, isn't it? Around and then I had to lift up my leg and he held that. And he was it's a good... Yeah, yeah I, I trusted... I think we all trusted him, didn't we, girls? Yeah, we did. And yeah. yeah, he was a very good partner. <laughs> there we go. Come on, I want to feel this firm grip that everyone okay. else has felt. Da -da -da. Well I can't, done. I can't, you I can't do it with you. Jacket on because I'm not taking my clothes off. I can see where oh, this is going. I'm not asking you to take your top off, just a jacket. Not on the first date. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> You've got a firm grip, though. Oh, well, thank you. So I'm pleased you're looking happy. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, yeah. sure whether you'd still be here by the end of today, so that's a bonus. Well, I'm still here now, but there's no saying whether I'm going to be here in the morning or not. Farmer James's life is stuck in a rut. He needs to change his lonely singleton existence. So I've brought him to London to embark on a five-step programme to discover what he wants from life. This might be why you're single. It's a possibility, yes. Yeah. I've had him jumping for joy with a bevy of ballerinas. I must admit I've had more fun than I expected. But there's a long way to go. I'm still here now, but there's no saying whether I'm going to be here in the morning or not. Farmer James is a man's man. He's used to living a solitary life, which is stopping him from taking opportunities and developing relationships. 
So for the next stage of my five-step programme, I'm sending James to meet psychologist Angela Matunda in a bid to get him to open up. The purpose of this meeting really is for me to get to know you a little bit more and find out what's brought you here today. A car. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just trying to make some changes in my life. So when you say um, make some changes, yeah. it sounds like things weren't going the way you wanted them to in order to change them. Um, I wouldn't say that. I mean, you know, I'm very happy in my work life. No. How do you feel about this? It's all right. <laughs> not my, you know, it's not my idea of fun, but... <laughs> what is your idea of fun? Just going out and having a good time, having fun, you know. I like my job and like the guys I work with, and we just have fun. So you, you sound, the way you're describing it, as if, like, it's all going on great for you. So I'm thinking, what's not going great then that brings you here because the way you describe it, it's fabulous you asked me what I'd be doing to go out and have fun yeah. so and you've told me yeah and then you've gone and turned that round and saying so your life sounds so perfect why are you here I didn't use the word perfect no but that's what you insin fabulous. no that's what you insinuated he's fabulous same difference it's what you insinuated okay so... So something's brought you here, that's all I'm trying to get to. I guess I don't want to be, uh, telling someone something that is, you know, private or personal. I want to make sure I trust that person before I share that knowledge with them. You mentioned trust as if that's quite an important thing to you. It is. Trust is important to me because I'm quite a guarded person, generally speaking, I think, and always have been. In that respect, then, I uh, protect myself against being hurt or being uh, screwed over. Putting up defences is a great way to protect yourself, but at the same time, I guess, prevents people coming in. I guess it does, really. Yeah. Uh, I suppose it's one of the reasons why I'm doing this, is to sort of go out and try new experiences and meet new people, and so, is the reason why I'm here. OK, so you're looking for a... Lady. And I'm wondering how that lady would feel encountering somebody who feels quite guarded. You're not going to tell me that you go on a first date with someone and you open up your life story to them. I have done that. Yeah. <laughs> I have. <laughs> and did the guy run a mile? Or did He's he... my husband. Well, it works for you. But I think sometimes if you're opening up in relationships and the other person doesn't open up, it can feel like that's not a buying signal. That's like a, oh, no. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, but I generally try and think I'm quite reciprocal. Yeah. And oh, so if she told you something, yeah, you'd tell her something yeah, yeah, back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the future and allowing someone into your life and getting to really know you. Yeah. What do you feel you need to do in order to kind of open the door a little bit more so that you are not so guarded that you, you know, may be missing out on someone amazing? Uh, I guess I need to uh, throw caution to the wind a bit more and uh, just go for things a little bit more than maybe I do now. Angela has got through the barriers, but James is a tough nut to crack. He's built up walls between himself and other people. He's going to have to start taking those walls down, and I think he has started to do that, dipping his toe into doing this process. But I think he's going to have to push himself when it comes to trusting. Am I a trusting person? Of course I am, yes. I'm very interesting. A lot of men lie. <laughs> a lot. For me, I give everyone one chance. If you screwed it up, then you'll never get trusted again. In a relationship, I would say trust is everything. 100%. Trust is one of the key factors in any relationship you have with anyone. <laughs> I think I'm trustworthy. I don't know about uh, other guys. Can you find love without trust? No, I don't think you can. I think it... Uh... Well, I wouldn't call it love, and I think it would cost you a lot of money. So, 
I want to know how it went this morning with Angela. Yeah, I think it went fine. Yeah, had a good chat about some stuff, so... You know, about how guarded I am and learning to trust people and how I need to be more open and be a bit more vulnerable to people and uh, less guarded, I guess, is what I took from this morning. Do you think that's true? Yeah, I think it is true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. James is making progress, but opening up to a new mindset clearly isn't going to happen to this farmer overnight. What I need to get him to do is understand that without welcoming trust into your life, you're lost. This is James. This is Hi. Anne I'm and James. Terry. Hi, nice, nice to meet you. Hi, Terry. Nice to Hi, meet nice you. Meet you. Hi. Now, James, their relationship is built entirely on trust. I have very limited sight. Yes. So in order for me to run safely, I need a guide runner. Right. And that's how I met Anne. That was the initial link, wasn't it? It, it had was. to be trust. And So you had to um, trust her the minute you met her before you'd even had a chance to get to know her? It, that was the sort of premise of it, really, yes. Right. It was, it was this, this person I'm going to be running with, I need to put my trust in. Otherwise, okay. let's not bother, really. Terry obviously has a really positive outlook. She can't even get on a bus without someone helping her. So. Or conversely, James has a really negative attitude. He doesn't trust people, which means he thinks the worst. Because if you're walking around untrusting and suspicious, then you think people might be out to get you or they haven't got your best interests at heart. And actually, you have a better life, you have a bigger life if you go, well, you haven't done anything wrong to me, I'm going to take a risk. To help James understand how guiding works, Terry's invited him to take her for a trot around the track. I'm ready when you are. As her partner, it's up to James to gain her trust by steering her through the course. I'm standing in the middle of the track to keep clear of the hurdles. Surprisingly, James is rising to the challenge without much fuss. Okay, if we bear out to the right, uh -huh. we'll walk with him by a couple of metres each. We'll do a stop about now. No. Okay. That was great. Well done. You thank did you. that really considering it's your first time guiding. I think you did really yeah, well. Yeah, well, thank you very much. How Indeed. was that? Yeah, it was good fun. That was a good warm up. Yeah. Because we're not finished with you just yet, Sonny Jim. No, I didn't think you would be somehow. Actually, you need to put your trust in someone. Uh, OK, I think I can see where this is going. <laughs> I'm so, going to run with Anne. Yeah? And you're going to wear this Am blindfold. I? And you're going to put 101% of your trust in this young lady yeah. and know that she's going to look after you. Do you want to do it? Yeah, let's go and try it, yeah? Yeah, you're up for it? Yeah, Good no for you. Good for you. All right, put that on. I'll be over there. We shall start walking. Okay. So, um, are we are we going? Are we onto the straight now? Or are we? We're nearly onto the straight. Yeah. And we're going to go to the gate. And we're going to go through the gate. Okay. Why are we going through the gate for? James doesn't know it, but Anne's taking him on a two-mile trek back to the man up flat. It feels completely different when you've got a blindfold on, doesn't it? Oh, gorgeous. To get home safely, he'll need to put complete trust in Anne. Now we're coming to some steps. Now step down again. Yep. That's good. Feel OK? Yep. Oh, shake off that stress. Now the shoe's on the other foot. How will James cope? We are next to the canal. You probably can't hear the water. No, but I we can't. are next to the canal. So if you feel yeah. comfortable, we're going to do a really gentle jog. Is that OK? Yeah, OK. OK, the bike's going to come past. Oh, you're touching me a bit much. That was quite close, okay. that bike. I know. Gentle jog, then. There's a bike nearby. Yeah, but he's well away from us. That's fine. Slow down a bit. How do you feel about doing this now? It's very, very strange. What are you thinking? Yeah, I think you're far happier in my environment what I'm used to, which is countryside, where it's a lot quieter. It's fine. You're doing great. I'm leading it. Wait, wait, wait. There, yeah, good. got it. Got it. I wonder what happened if I fell down the stairs. I wonder how that go down on health and safety. Okay. Yeah. I am more comfortable with it, but I wouldn't say I'm properly comfortable, if you know what I mean. No. I am so proud of you. All right, take the blindfold off. And we have made it back. How Thank cool you. is that? You did so well. Thank you. It's uh, very surreal and very... Difficult. Did you feel yourself relax more when you got going? Because I could feel that you were more trusting as we got going. Yeah, I guess I did, yeah. Because okay. we have never met each other before. No, 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 no. It was, it was good, yeah. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, very nice to meet you too. See you later. Bye. Take care. Bye. 
James has done so much better than I expected. But as James settles in for the evening, he starts to question whether the process is actually working for him. Do you think that I should trust you because you've had me run around with a very nice lady who's very, very good at guiding me that, running around in busy London streets, crossing the road with a blindfold on, when I've never done anything like that before in the past. Do you think I should trust you because of that? Country boy James is on a mission to man up. Yeah. So far, it's been a bumpy ride. What's brought you here today? A car. With a few flashes of realisation. I need to be more open and be a bit more vulnerable to people and uh, less guarded, I guess. But with James, it seems to be one step forward and two steps back. Do you think I should trust you because of that? Yesterday's trust exercise hit a nerve with our farmer and it's highlighted what may be the core issue, communication. James rarely shares what he feels with anyone. So I'm meeting him before the next challenge to clear the air. Hello there. Morning, Olivia. How are you? Fine, thanks. How are you feeling? Not too bad. And yourself? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you feeling now? You've kind of... Yesterday's done. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting... I wouldn't say it's getting more natural, but I'm getting more used to it, certainly, yeah. You're going to have to I get know. into it and start, you know... I know. ..going with the flow. You can't keep fighting us all. Yes, but it makes everything more fun, doesn't it? Well, not really, actually. No, no. Not for you, because you might be missing out on the full experience. Much like Angela felt a bit of resistance and a bit of defensiveness, that's what I'm sensing, a lot of that. Okay. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that communication is an area that you could probably improve on. You know, I've seen kind of how you've been interacting here. I'd say that it's, it's taken you a while, which is fair enough. Mm, I disagree. You disagree? Yeah, I think I'm perfectly fine at communicating. You think communic you're perfect? Did you just say? No, I think <laughs> I'm perfectly fine with my communication skills, generally speaking. You know, uh... Well, I don't. So what have you got for me? Well, you're going to find out in a minute. Come on. No, I can't tell you. You'll find out for yourself. Okay, well, uh, let's... Why don't let's... you head off in there and I'll see you in a bit? Yeah, okay then. Good luck. Well, <laughs> I won't need it because I've got this loop. Because you're perfect? No, no. Just good. I'm actually pulling my hair out. He'll only talk about what he wants to talk about. He'll only tell you so much. He's got it all worked out. I don't feel that he's really showing me the truth of what's going on. He's just presenting this very calm and collected exterior. Now, let's be frank. If he was that calm and collected and confident, he wouldn't be here. He's chosen to man up. Take the help. I'm so frustrated. I want to see James communicating effectively. But what he really needs is practice. So I'm sending him into an environment where plain speaking is essential. Our farmer will be running the pass. That's restaurant speak for managing the lunchtime rush. OK, guys, this is James. Dave. Hi, guys. Hi. Nice to meet you. Jasper, head chef. Manager Justin shows James the ropes. OK, check coming through. Can you take it off? OK. All cold except for the chips. One halloumi salad, add parma ham. Louder, louder, louder. louder. One, one halloumi salad, add parma ham, one pan cheddar and chicken, one hand cut chips. But making sure the chefs know what to cook is only part of the job. He's also got to double check that orders match what leaves the kitchen, meaning dialogue with the whole team is essential. Okay, halloumi salad, parma ham, chicken pancetta, hand cut chips. 75 outside. Can James express himself effectively enough to keep the kitchen on track? Yeah, I'm quite nervous about it. It's, it looks like it's going to be really, really quite fast-paced, I think. <laughs> if it isn't, it's your fault. The main well, you're in charge for that, No pressure there, then. James needs to communicate with complete clarity. With the dining room filling up, the orders are coming in fast and furious. Two lemon tart, one pork burger, one... Beef burger, one halloumi salad, one tortellini, one lamb steak, medium, and one special meat, no pineapple. Wait, wait, wait. Our feisty farmer can bark out the orders. One croque, madame, no chips, lentils instead. 
but he's failing to interact with the entire team, including the chefs behind him, meaning everyone's getting confused. Come on, come on, read the ticket. Come on, duck dumb things. Look over your shoulder, look, they're making things that yeah. haven't even, aren't even on order. It doesn't make sense. Right. It gets uh, quite confusing. One tortelloni, one, one homey salad. I need it now, please. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Even worse, James isn't checking the orders as they go out. Do you want to let me sell a gun, yeah? I don't see a chicken salad anywhere there. Wow. Are you making s up or what? It's not Philip, though, is it? No, I don't know what the f they're doing. All right, all right, all right. James. Then disaster strikes. Half a table is missing its food, and manager Justin's forced to step in. Where's table 16? Table 16, only half the food went. Now the other half's gone. That's where the salmon salad's gone. That's where you're short of salmon salad. Right. Huh? Right. So, right. You need to know exactly which food you've got. Right. Yeah. Basically, I think there's a bit of confusion between myself and the guys at the front of the house going out and stuff. So. James might be making excuses, but one thing's clear. He can't communicate about a salmon salad, let alone what he wants in life. But I'm not giving up on him just yet. I've got a plan B. So you're going to be stuck at the top of there. Yeah. It's only about 211 feet high. And okay. you're not coming down until I'm satisfied that I've gotten to know the real you. I don't think you're ever going to be satisfied, Olivia. No, no, it takes a while, but I get there. I'll see. <laughs> so take that. The only way is up for James. 311 steps to the top of the tower. I'm going to ask him a series of questions about what he wants in life, then get him to shout down his answers, his honest answers, for all of London to hear. I'm really hoping that he's he's in a situation now where he, he can't get away. He's stuck <laughs> at the top of the tower, like Rapunzel. The only difference is he doesn't have the hair. Holy crap. <laughs> Question number one. Go on, then. How are you feeling about shouting your answers? I couldn't give a s***. No, I'm not having it. <laughs> that is facetious and rude. My apologies. I do apart. I must admit, that is pretty bad of me, actually, swearing in front of a lady. What would you like to change about yourself? I'd like to be more trusting! I can't hear you! I'd like to be more trusting! Yeah, cha-ching! Back in the net, you have one point. What do you want most from your life? To be happy! What would make you happy? To go home! Not good enough! If you were that happy there... You wouldn't be here. What else would make you happy? Just give you a minute to think about that, could you please? Lots of things. Sweetheart, you're going to have to go there. I need specifics. What would make you happy? My own house, a family. Right. You want a house? You want a family? How are you going to get it? Through trust, hard work, being more open. That's it. Scream at the top of your voice. I need to trust more. I need to trust more. Louder. 
I need to trust more! I need to trust more! You need to trust more? Why? Because it'll get me the things I want! Exactly! Now we're talking! Well done! Singleton James is on a quest to uncover what he needs in life. So far, it's been somewhat difficult. Good luck. Well, <laughs> I won't need it because I've got this link. Because no, you're perfect. No, no, just good. He's learned some important lessons. Till 16, only half the food went. Right, huh? my fault. Because right, you're not turning around for these guys. And discovered some truths about himself. What would make you happy? My own house! A family! James has finally admitted what he wants out of life. To reflect his new focus, it's time to ditch the farmhouse fashion for something more female-friendly. He looks like a lot of other people. Doesn't really stand out. He wouldn't be the kind of person I would talk to in a bar just because he doesn't look like he takes a lot of care in his appearance. He just needs a bit smartening up, I think. He could do with a woman's touch. Having a sense of style is about more than just pulling the ladies. It's about having a sense of pride and respect for who you are. Our country lad needs a wardrobe overhaul, and Gemma Shepherd's just the woman for the job. Truly, your look's not dreadful by any means. But for me, it's all about it looking like it's intended. The hair, it could do with perhaps a bit more texture in it. It starts to look like you've made that little bit of personal effort. I'm excited. I think we're going to have a really good day today. Sure. Yeah. Short sleeve shirts. Should we embrace the smart casual? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Top button undone, OK? Sure. Guys love to be comfortable. You can still achieve comfort and look good. I think it needs to look a bit smarter, a bit sharper. OK, can I just see the shirt out? It's slightly more youthful. When you tuck it in, it's kind of like you're encasing the tummy area. Let's have a look. I'm less keen on the chinos. Certainly new on me. I think he's quite aging. Let's try some more. It's quite interesting to sort of meet someone who sort of knows what they're talking about. You know, quite enjoying it. Okay. What do you think? I don't like the cardigan too. I much. agree. But it all looks a bit try hard. Yeah. Back to dressing room. Okay. I really like that. I think it works. OK, turn around. Oh, you, that's the first time I've seen you slightly excited. <laughs> but James's joy quickly fades at the prospect of some serious manscaping. I'm really not happy about this. Uh, it's like ripple of the plaster. Hmm. It's not too bad, is it? It's not that great either. Maybe a haircut will cheer him up. Or maybe not. Yeah, there's not really a lot there to go at. James has gone from country bumpkin to man about town. Crikey! What a difference! You're glowing! Boy, thank You've gone you. from Wurzel Gummidge to Warren Beatty. You look great. Thank you very much. Really, really great. Honestly, I love it. Let's sit down and have a chat. Yeah, great. Sit down. Cheers. Thank you for your help and your colleagues. No, and thank you for your cooperation at times. I think you've had a really good journey, actually. I've had a really fun week. Mm. It's taught me some things about myself. Like what? Like um, being more trusting and more open to people I don't know. Yeah, that's been the theme. Yeah, I think so. I have tried to ruffle your feathers and I have tried to find out more about the inner workings of you. Do you think I've helped you on this experience? I think you have, yes. Yeah. How are you feeling now? It's all done. Uh, pretty glad and a little bit sad, I guess. And what if I told you you didn't have to be sad that it was over? Because... I'd say, what torture <laughs> have you dreamed up for me now? So you know you need to be more open? more trusting, yeah. say yes more. Indeed. So, you need to say yes to the next thing. 
I want to lay it on me and we'll see what I say. Um, you're going to go on a date tonight? No. <laughs> you just said you were going to say yes! I'm joking! <laughs> of course I'm going to say yes. James has only one hour to spruce himself up before his romantic dinner for two. Fortunately, he's a dab hand in the kitchen. I don't know where anything is in this kitchen. I'm just trying to concentrate. I'm making my version of a pasta carbonara. Something fairly neutral, fairly easy, fairly bland, I guess. This is my mum's recipe. Hopefully, whoever is coming will like it. It's the first time I've actually made this myself, so this could be very interesting. James doesn't realise, but he'll be playing host to Kareen from the ballet class. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. I hope he's excited to meet me. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm a bit nervous. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, James. James needs to use the skills he's learnt this week to open up and communicate. Oh, this is fabulous. Um, do you want me to take yes. you off and just... Thank you. ..put them in some more so time nice, in? So nice, James. Um, do you want a glass of wine? Oh, yes, please. Smooth James. Dig in. Okay. Anyway, so what do you do for a living? Make earrings. So did you make the earrings you're wearing tonight? Yeah, I made these ones. They look really nice. Thank really you. suit you. Oh, cheers. James is relaxed and on form <laughs> and even open to some personal questions. Are you planning to have any children? Uh, yeah, I'd definitely like to have children in the future. Um, I'm sort of getting to the point now where I sort of think I'm at the right age to have them when I find the right lady. I'm trying to be more engaging, sort of smiling more and be more talkative and sort of not shut down answers quite as quickly as uh, I can do sometimes. Five days ago, I'd never have imagined a finickety farmer could be so charming in female company. <laughs> I've really enjoyed this week. I've really enjoyed the challenges. Not so much the costumes Olivia's had me wearing, but there you go. Chatting with Olivia this afternoon, I think that we sort of came out of that with a kind of a mutual respect for each other. So, James, I had a really good night. Yeah, so much. It's been a case of working on the inside of me rather than the outside. Is there any chance I could get your phone number? Oh, James. <laughs> or just... is that maybe for another day? Maybe for another day. Or you could Facebook me. I'll Facebook you then. Thank you. Okay. One of the major things that I've really taken away from this is not saying no to things I don't like the sound of. I think I've come out of it looking at life a little bit differently, a bit more positively. Success. Good night. Safe journey. Bye bye. Bye. When I got home from London, it was a bit of a disappointment that the adventure was over, but uh, pretty much all been positive so far. James, when he got back, was a completely different person. He was full of himself, really bright, bubbly, just got his confidence back. It was really nice to see our old Bambi back. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Despite the pink shorts. <laughs> I guess the main things I learned about myself were to put my faith in people more than perhaps I had done in the past. I learned to be more patient and just not let work rule me as much as I have done in the past. Cheers. Cheers.